everyone. Welcome again to another one of our Hobby Memorial Library virtual events. We are very excited today to have uh, Professor Chester Drake. He is going to be getting us on the right road to uh, be an entrepreneur, talk to us about business, talk to us about some of the uh, programs that they have in the business department. And um, hopefully everyone will um, just be enlightened and go out there and get their own business started. So uh, thank you, sir, for visiting with us today. We are very excited to have you and um, we're gonna let you just take it away. Okay, <clears throat> thank you for the kind introduction. Um, there we go. Let me see if my screen has come up. Is that are you seeing my screen now? Yes, we are. Okay, ready great. To go. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing my slideshow? Yes, we okay, see your great. slideshow. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, I am uh, Professor Drake, and I, I'm in charge of some different things. I, I teach uh, our logistics and global supply chain management program. I also have the accounting technician program. And last but not least, I'm the, I teach the entrepreneurship program. What I wanted to talk about today, uh, accounting is not the most exciting thing in the world, um, but I'm happy to answer questions on it. And also, if um, uh, I'm, uh, if you have questions as I go through any of this, please stop and ask me. But what I wanted to talk about today was the supply chain management program and give you an introduction to that, because I don't think many people know about this. and. I dare say that most of you uh, two years ago really didn't give supply chain much of a thought. But with the uh, onset of COVID, when you went to your local grocery store and couldn't find toilet paper, uh, and uh, we got through all of that, and lo and behold, we're back to Costco not providing toilet paper. So supply chain has become a, a hot topic on the news and uh, is something that a lot of folks are interested in. So what we've done is uh, with the, the supply chain program is we, we built it to, to with really three groups of students in mind. We were thinking about first off students fresh out of high school who might want a career that they can uh, become employed and lucratively employed fairly quickly. We also have a number of students who come out of the military who have got supply chain logistics backgrounds and would like to transfer transfer to a civilian career. And then finally, we've got uh, people in the military that, that want to um, move. I'm sorry, we've got people in the military who also want to advance their careers in the military. And then finally, we've got some folks that have come to us with supply chain experience in the civilian world and want to enhance their career. So those are kind of the groups of people we're, we're looking at. Uh, one of the reasons this is such an interesting program is that uh, we, it's probably the most rapidly changing field in the business world. And I'll, I'll talk about that a good bit at the, at the end. So, but basically we offer two stackable certificates uh, that are designed for uh, the completion of the, uh, AAS program, and it, we really see it a uh, real focus in the program is developing people's soft skills. And the reason for that is employers are not just working, looking for people who can pick, pack, and ship in a warehouse. They're looking for, for people who can do some research, some writing, build adaptability and flexibility to meet the changing demands in the field. And we really see the program as a pathway to supervision and um, management positions. That's me. Um, I developed the program. My background is I'm a, a retired CPA. I've been an industry consultant. I've implemented uh, accounting and uh, warehouse management, order management, ERP systems for companies as large as uh, Wesco, which was 400 branch offices in the U.S. to uh, I did a liquor distributor, a single liquor distributor, I've done uh, multiple grocery store chains. Folks you'd know would be uh, Shutterfly, uh, Schlotzky's, uh, blah, 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 on and on, so on and so forth. But I, I, none, 
needless to say, you can see from my picture, I'm, I've been around and been there, done that, and sent the postcard back. So the program, uh, we've got the logistics specialist uh, certificate of completion gives you some of the fundamentals of that you need for a logistics job. The supply chain management is really more about purchasing, importing, exporting, international business. And then um, we have the associate's, associate's degree that pulls those two together. Uh, the courses that we teach are the log introduction to logistics, which is the core course. And in teach in uh, kind of in the, the, the overall theme of the program being international, the textbook for this is a book that's published in Germany and uh, is what I thought probably the best overview of it logistics, but not a, it's not a traditional text. Uh, materials management, again, um, this is used as a text that is an executive supply chain guide. It's not a textbook, but it's really the best current practices in material management for operating managers. Uh, international and domestic transportation, we uh, have a more traditional textbook for this from the management perspective and really looks at how transportation issues interrelate with the supply chain. Warehouse and distribution management, uh, this is one of my favorites because one of my first jobs was a warehouse manager and believe you me, it did not look like that when I started. We didn't have forklifts when I first started, we had hand dollies. And uh, but this course uh, looks at how wet warehouses, warehouse systems, and how warehouses are laid out, and then the performance measures, financial and operating performance measures for warehouses. When we get into the uh, supply chain courses, we've got a purchasing course. This is looks at uh, developing supply chain relationships, cost management, lean practices, contract negotiation, and looks at performance and purchasing and, and all of that fun stuff about um, bringing materials into an organization. Look at principles of exports, gives us the, uh, it, it, uses an industry handbook for entrepreneurs interested in expanding their overseas operations. Principles of imports is the flip side of that. It looks at a, issues with both importing and exporting. Then we go into some more of the uh, introduction to international business. This uses a traditional text and it really explores the monetary global issues, foreign markets, investments, international business strategies. And we look at cultural, ethical, political, economic, legal differences in different cultures. And, and basically, well, how does that international business work? Next course is our global supply chain management course. This looks at the, again, a textbook offering that looks at the global marketplace and how the, we develop it, the, all those relationships on an international scale. It focuses us on forecasting, planning, process management, supply chain integration in the global environment. The fun course, I think all of that, yikes. Fun course is a capstone course, which is a computer game. Um, and I'm currently running that game and it, students have to go through eight simulations of a successful supply chain. And it is an eye opener of trying to balance products, facility, transportation resources, and transportation routes to really optimize customer value. It, you've got to make decisions on cost, quality, availability, maintainability of systems. And it just, it's a fun, fun course. So what does all of this lead to? Well, as I've said at the beginning, two years ago, none of us thought about much about supply chain. But uh, as we move through the coursework, we become issue, acquainted with the cutting edge trends in logistics and supply chain management. And what this is really trying to do is give get us an introduction into the field. Um, what are some of the things that are happening that are impacting us? Robotics. Wow. Um, I just saw a thing the other day, a picture of Amazon is beginning to deliver food with little robotic carriers uh, in, a, in a neighborhood situation. But robotics is rapidly changing the way we physically handle things. And this includes uh, semi-robotics where people wear uh, suits that help them lift heavier loads. But basically robotics can do a lot of the old routine work that when, when I started out doing this stuff, we did all of it by hand. 
um, artificial and augmented intelligence. This is a, an interesting area. This doesn't mean that the computers are going to start thinking for us, but they're going to make more of the routine decisions and give us a lot of information that, that will help us make more informed decisions. So again, a big, big impact on the way we're going to do business in the, in the supply chain of the, the future. Real-time supply chain visibility. This is the Internet of Things, IoT. You may have heard of IoT, may or not have, but what IoT is is intelligent devices. So we can put a, an intelligent device in a shipping container and it, we can track that shipping container all the way through the world. You think about how, the application of that in, a, say, a grocery chain where you want to know where the product goes from and was that container kept at 40 degrees or lower throughout the, the uh, distribution chain. You think about when they were di distributing uh, COVID vaccine and had to be kept at a sub-zero or very low temperature. How do you make sure that that happened? Where was that container all the way through its process until it goes from the manufacturer to the final user? So IoT-enabled containers enable that monitoring, and it communicates that through 5G wireless basically anywhere in, in, in the supply chain. Next chain, big thing is blockchain technology. Blockchain, if you're familiar with crypto, you've heard of cryptocurrencies. Blockchain is the, the internet or the technology underlying cryptocurrencies. And what it does is it provides an unchangeable ledger, which is say is an unmodifiable chain of custody. Um, one of the early applications of this was processing customs documents electronically rather than chasing paper. Uh, you can imagine the paperwork involved in a customs transaction. If you can tie that to a, a, a blockchain ledger, run that through the system, you can track a shipment all the way through its system, all the way up through and including payment back to, uh, based on the proof of a delivery. Well, pretty interesting stuff. Data analytics. <clears throat> I know every time I, I do an internet search, it seems I all of a sudden get advertisements popping up on my uh, my social media feeds. Well, where's that coming from? That's all part of this whole area of data analytics. And this is improving customer service and uh, of improving effectiveness in the supply chain. And, and it, again, another big area that is developing. Risk management. We are all familiar with computer risks, but think about the risks in the supply chain. Uh, who dreamed that COVID would completely destroy our supply chains? Um, and so when we look at our supply chains, what are all the different risks? What, do we, what kind of internal risk do we have? What are, how do we identify events? What kind of risk assessment, risk response, control activities? How do we communicate that? How do we monitor? And it's not just one of the challenges in supply chain is we're not just talking about risk within our organization. We're talking about risk within an extend, expanded change of folks who are working with us. So how do we monitor across all of those links? And, and just as an aside, I'm actually working on my doctorate in business administration in supply chain management. My dissertation that I'm in the process of writing is about a supply chain risk for small construction companies. Um, so this is an area that I've got a great deal of current interest in. So why, why does all of that matter? What, what are we concerned about in our program? Well, what employers are telling us is that they're looking for people with soft skills. They're looking for what we're calling the knowledge worker. And this is the person who can link all of these different disparate parts together and to say, hey, uh, you know, I know this, I, I see this risk, I, I see this data analytics, I can communicate that through my blockchain, I, I can check on my IoT container, and how do I piece all of that stuff together? So we're looking at how do we develop student, how do we develop workers who can research and communicate innovative solutions, not only within their own organization with, with the supply chain suppliers. 
and that's why I, that's really one of the key focuses of, the, of developing the program. So the program really focuses a lot on research and writing. Not it's not a memorize and regurgitate back kind of program at all. And so that it's kind of interesting, uh, and that uh, really sums up what I had to talk about with supply chain. I want to close that out and I want to talk about entrepreneurship if I might. So is my screen still up? Cindy, is my screen still up? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I also teach the uh, entrepreneurship and business uh, planning course and what that course does is it walks us through a series of lessons and so what we, this course when I first started teaching it, we had a $175 textbook that was basically a cookbook. Now, how many of you like to cook? I can't see you, so I'm assuming that a number of you do. And those of you who cook and cook a lot, how often do you refer to a recipe? You, you look at it, but do you follow it exactly? When it says a, a pinch of salt you, or a teaspoon of salt, do you grab your teaspoon or you just put a teaspoon out in your hand and throw it in? The key to being an entrepreneur is not knowing the answers, it's knowing how to find the answers. What's the end of the string that I can look at to figure out what I need to know? So we designed this course, I discarded the textbook. The complaint I was getting was this is too uh, cookie cutter. So I discarded the textbook and I looked on, uh, you know, let me open up a lesson I can show you. So first lesson is, are you really set out, up, set out to be an entrepreneur? Well, here's, the learning activities, uh, small business administration website articles, uh, YouTube videos. Um, this one is one of my favorites. This is Mike Rowe, Don't Follow Your Passion. It, said, it tells you don't necessarily follow your passion, but look at your skill sets. So, uh, then we have a bunch of several TED Talks that really talk about uh, what do we need to do to be a, a successful leader? How do we how do we make decisions? How do we, uh, what are the habits of success, of original thinkers? And what we do, then the assignment is uh, establish a personal vision. And are, are you emotionally suited, suited to start, start your company? What kind of business? You know, what are you, you know, all of the questions that you need to ask yourself about starting a business. So that's kind of, that's the first lesson of that. And then we then go back to the lessons page. We go to, um, What's your idea? What's your business concept? The dream is not a concept. Everybody dreams, but can you identify a really good concept? I mean, I cannot, you imagine thinking that somebody would be interested in, in where you are on yourself and you could tag your, yourself on your cell phone? What kind of stupid idea is that? Well, here we have Facebook. Um, so, and you know, we see all sorts of different concepts here. I've I've got students who have developed, done tattoo parlors, wedding events. I'm, I'm talking to a lady today who's interested in starting a, a dog uh, transportation business. So take dogs to the vets. I uh, last semester I had a, a student who was going to do a dog poop cleanup business. Um, all sorts of different ideas that, that come out. And, and what we do here is. Give you an opportunity to express that statement and and, and give it a little bit of an idea of yeah this this really is a good idea. Once we settle on the concept, then we build the marketing plan. You know, you know a little saying you can build a better mouse trap, but uh, you got to get got to get people to knock on your door. So getting the market, getting the idea out is key. And it's not my screen says there, the devil is in the details. The answer, of course, today is social media, but how do we utilize social media to really develop our marketing plan? And then the fourth lesson is uh, cash flow is king. Matter, money matters. We build a cash flow statement. So here we test the assumptions. What am I thinking about doing and how, um, how much is it going to cost and what kind of revenue stream can I plan on? Better to find that out now than when you run out of money. Um, so, next one is opening the business, early management decisions. I, I I opened a business a number of years ago, and believe me, there were a lot of surprises in that process. 
And so what we've tried to do here is, is outline some of those early to management decisions and give you a chance to think through those. I don't think we're going to answer all the questions, but what we try to do is give you the, the background of, okay, I've got the problem now, how do I solve it? The next step is uh, management organization. How do we build the management team? Uh, what is the organization going to look at, look like? Uh, if it's a one person organization, well, or very frequently it's a, a, a husband and wife. Um, that's a very different organization than an organization, say the a, a wedding uh, venue where I've got to have caterers and uh, grounds people and you know how and and how do we how do we integrate all of that? So again, how do we build a, an organization to support our idea? And then the final thing we do is we wrap it up in a final big time package and put a nice bow on it. Find it in that it's a big. But not a, it's not a big endeavor if you break it up into its parts, but we build that final business plan and we try to do it where if you want to take it to a, a, a somebody that's going to help you finance it or you want to pull a partner into it, it's a, a package that you can put together and you, and you can be proud to hand out to somebody. So that's based the basics of the, the entrepreneurship course. And so that's <clears throat> Um, basically, what I wanted to share with you, I can talk about the accounting technician program, but uh, I, if, I, if there are any questions on that, I'd be happy to do that. I, let me, I'll go ahead and give you a quick overview of that. Basically, that program is designed to uh, prepare students either to do the accounting for a small business or to work on the staff of a larger business. I ran some fairly large accounting departments, and I would love to have had I had. Uh, employees who had backgrounds in accounting doing my accounts payable. It would have been a, a, a very often we took people that had no background in accounting at all and, and trained them to do the work. This is a, a, a course that allows you to, to build, build up for the, uh, develop the skills to do that. And what it covers is the fundamentals of accounting, uh, accounting for QuickBooks, we have a payroll and income tax course, a better basic federal income tax course, and a basic finance course. If you've got those courses together, you can run the accounting for a small business. And um, I, I developed this course. Most of our students are not going to move on to being CPAs. And there are a lot of courses in the college curriculum that lead you to a CPA exam preparation. Most people don't need that. They're not going to end up being CPAs, but this they could get this associate's degree and have all the accounting they need to, to be successful in the field. And so that's what I intended to talk about and a little more. Um, and the danger of giving a professor a, an unlimited time frame is I'll, I'll talk forever. So are there any questions anybody's got? Does anybody have any questions right now? Uh, there are no questions on the Facebook side, but I do have a comment and somebody, Kyle, is very excited to roll in the class next semester. Cool. I, I do have a couple of questions um, in regard to um, getting started in a business. I, I've always heard, um, you know, I've always entertained having starting a business. And I've, I've always heard, oh, you have to have a certain amount of money before you even think of starting a business. Is there truth in that? Is there a specific amount of money that you need to get started on a business? It depends upon what kind of business you're going to start. And that's why we go through that money matters step where we build the financial plan. Because what you've got to look at is what are, what are, what are, and what we specifically look at is what kind of equipment do we need? Uh, what are my startup costs going to be? And then what are the monthly revenue and expense going to be? And that, that's the only way to really intelligently answer that is to, to run some financial projections on it. Okay. Um, and also I've heard, um, I, I've always, like I said, entertain it, but then I've heard all these warnings. Another warning I've heard is you're not going to make any money at all for the first two years. Is there any truth in that? Depends upon what business you're starting. Um, if you're starting something, um, uh, last semester I had a student who was flipping houses and um, made a relatively modest investment in the first house and within about uh, three or four months had managed to flip it and made a fairly substantial profit on it. Now that 
we happened to be in a time that where the real estate market was accelerating like crazy and uh, that had an impact on the amount of profitability and that won't guarantee that every house he flips is going to have that kind of profit but he certainly made a profit on the on the within the first few months when I when I started my own business uh, a number of years ago I was I actually paid back my investment in the business in the first three months now I never made a, a huge fortune at it uh, obviously I'm not still running it for various reasons but uh, you know, it, it, again it really depends upon the business so it sounds like your entrepreneur class um, touches upon anything you would ever need to look at before even considering getting started in the business. Is is this why you keep trying to get me into your class? Well, <laughs> I should go in your class. <laughs> the, the, the key to success in anything is knowing the right questions. Right? Right. And so if I can give you enough exposure to these issues and with your thinking about your business and not just me give you thinking I you know it's Mark Cuban and uh, uh, you know all these different people that uh, have started business in the, in the TED talks and let them uh, share their expertise if if together we can't their thinking my thinking and your thinking can't get you an asking the right questions we we're something's wrong and so I, th I think the real answer to that question is learn to ask the right questions and figure out how to find the answers. Does that make sense? Yes, it, it does. And, and I just need to know, do you also teach um, the warning signs of when you should cut loose and go find a job with a paycheck? <laughs> You'll know it when that happens. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, it, um, you know, you'll, you'll, you, we, what we do, we're optimistic. We look at one of the thing, one of the questions we ask is what's your exit strategy? And mm -hmm. we assume in asking the question of your exit strategy that you, how are you going to pass this on to your kids? Are you going to sell it when you're successful or all of that? Uh, I, I don't take the, I don't start anything with the expectation of failure. And so um, this is, I'm an optimist at heart. Yes. Yeah. If you, what is it? If you build it, they will come. If you build or... it, they will come. And my own personal experience was I was not necessarily in the long run financially successful, but I had a heck of a good run and I had an enormously good time and learned a tremendous amount. And even though I didn't turn it into a, and, and I, I've been in, in, I've worked for a couple of computer companies that were startup companies. Uh, I've been through the business ups and downs, and I, and I don't see any of them, even though one company I worked for, we took it public, uh, an oil company, we took public, went through the that whole uh, public offerings and, uh, thing, and within a year, the company was bankrupt because of the downturn in the oil industry. Yeah, but um, I, don't, I don't view any of those as failures. Learning, learning experience. All learning experiences. Some of them a little more painful than others. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also, like if someone, if a student goes through your program um, and they're just trying to get started, do they ever call you back and look for you as a mentorship? Um, sure. Yeah, occasionally. Mm -hmm. Occasionally so, they do. Good, good. So you keep support. Um, oh, yeah. I'm, a, I'm around. I'm, I'm, I, I love to talk, so um, I'm happy to visit with folks about what their their needs are. Awesome, awesome. Well, does any I've been asking so many questions. Is is anybody come up with some questions yet, Lee? Actually, we we did get a question, but I think you might have just answered it. Um, they said, Drake, do you help consult students after the class is over with their business ventures? Sure. If as as long as it's relatively informal I'm happy to consult on an informal basis if if it's a big business and they need formal consulting then we'll talk about my fee but uh, if it's just answering a question here or there I'm I'm perfectly happy to do that 
Well, I'd be making a dollar ninety-five in my first year, so don't, I don't, don't charge. I don't. I, I don't. I don't make big <laughs> fees on that. most of. And in, in you know, uh, and I, I'm, I serve on a board of directors, a couple of boards of directors, and I don't charge for those sorts of things. So, um, I'm I'm flexible. But if if it gets to where I'm committing a lot of time and doing a lot of actual work, then I'm I, I don't do all of that for free. But uh, I, so, I so far, nobody's another, needed that. I have another question um, involving insurance. Um, it would seem like in today's world, every business that everybody starts has to have some degree of insurance. Is that a large um, cost in almost every business? We identify the risks and risk management, particularly risk requirements and solutions. And so it depends upon what your risk is. So okay. the, uh, if it's a, if it's a relatively small uh, operation and you're not exposing uh, folks to a, a lot of risk, then it, the risk insurance is relatively low. But if you're doing something that's it's high risk, then the insurance is going to be higher. But we, we that's one of the uh, early management decision questions that we okay. look into. So it's, we have another one. Uh, it says, do you also teach classes on personal finance, financial planning? I do not. Uh, there, We do offer a, a personal finance course. Cynthia White's teaching that. It's online. And I've got a uh, business finance course in the accounting technician program, but it it's not really focused at personal finance. Okay, it sounds very holistic. It sounds like your course, um, and you know, taking the courses. If anybody wants to start a business, um, this is where you start. Because <laughs> sounds like you've got every angle covered there. I don't have every angle covered, but I've got, again, I go back to I, I, it, the least I ought to be able to get you to ask the right questions. And if you can ask the right questions, then you can find the right answer. But nobody's got every angle covered. And that and that was, quite frankly, the, the $175 textbook that I threw out. It tried to cover every angle. And the, the complaint I got all the time was, this isn't relevant to my business. So, awesome. awesome. Being, a, being an entrepreneur is being inventive. Asking a lot of questions and being inventive and being brave and bold. So. And there's some of us, do you also cover people who also feel like they need to have a paycheck? <laughs> And oh, just sure. do entrepreneurship part time. Yeah, of course. <laughs> a number of students have come through the program that are are currently working and are living on are living off of that and doing something on a part time venture. Uh, a number of folks are retired and they've got a retirement income and they're they're utilizing this as a additional income. So, um, it's not necessarily. Again, it depends upon the kind of business you're starting. If you're starting a small personal services business, um, that and you, and you are needing to generate a lot of clients in a short period of time, that, that may not work for the replacing of a paycheck immediately. But over time, you may be able to build up to it. So, but again, these are all sort of the that's why we go through that first exercise of are you ready to be an entrepreneur? The answer fairly frequently is I'm not yet ready, but I'm, I, I can be ready in two years, or I can be ready after I retire, or I can be ready, you know, it, it really depends upon your own, your personal situation. That's awesome. That's awesome. Because that is a really important question. Do you feel confident enough you're going to do this? And that sounds like that would be the key to starting your business. You have to believe in yourself. Oh, yeah. So, awesome. Awesome. Any other questions, Lee? Uh, yes. Uh, what would be a good follow-up course for the entrepreneurship class? I hate to say it depends, but it really would depend. And I think that, that what would, the, I would think the thing, 
let me answer that a different way. I've recommended at the conclusion of that, I've, several times I've recommended that people take the fundamental accounting course, and I've also recommended people take the uh, finance, the business finance course. Uh, those are probably the two areas, accounting and finance are probably two of the areas where people fail in business most frequently. And so those are the, the two that I most frequently recommend, but there are times that I've recommended other things. Um, but again, it really depends. Do you uh, we have one more. Um, they're asking if you can, well, could you put it in the, the chat so I can copy and paste it over to them? Um, it says, can someone please send me the name of the instructor who teaches the personal finances class and the name of that class? The course is Cynthia White. The teacher is Cynthia White in the class, I think is just called personal finance. I don't remember the, the name. Personal finance? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I have an additional question. You had uh, touched upon, you know, doing your, the social media, doing your marketing. Um, do you also suggest that uh, people who want to be entrepreneurs will take a communications course or a basic social media course to help their business? Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, again, um, it really depends upon the situation and how you're intending to use uh, social media. Most people can utilize social media relatively easily and when we go through the marketing uh, let me flip over to that page um, when we talk about the marketing plan we've got a number of resources um, in how to develop uh, uh, how to develop social media uh, plans so mm -hmm. they're, 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 the thing about today is there's so much stuff available on the internet that you don't necessarily um, have to take a course to do something. Um, so I do not, I don't want to take away from our courses we may be offering, but I really would, I'd get into it and say, hey, I need more information on this. And things like social media, I'd, I've done some social media. I, I manage my own website. I learned to, to do a, a website optimization and I had my website where I was in the top five um, wow. returns on a number of different searches and so I didn't need to take, although people offer courses on SEO, I didn't need to take a course on SEO, it was something I could, could figure out. Um, so again, I don't, I don't know the answer to that until we get and figure out the personal situation. Okay, awesome. Awesome. So any more questions, Lee? No, that was it. Okay. Well, do you have any final thoughts, um, Professor Drake, on, um, you know, any uh, anything you want to say? <laughs> well, I, I, uh, I love to teach, and, I, and I've got three programs. If people are interested in any of those areas, I'd love to work with them. So um, I, I think it's a, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm I'm not a big reg memorize regurgitate kind of person in any of my classes. So um, it's come come visit with me. Come see me, and and we'll have not necessarily a whole lot of fun, but we'll have some fun along the line. So we'll have moderate fun. We'll have moderate fun. <laughs> Well, you have been wonderful. You've been enlightened. Um, you know, for those of us who keep rolling around, I'm going to go in business for myself. Um, you've answered a lot of questions and we know where to find a lot of our answers and to find the right questions to ask. Okay. So, you know, you, you have conveyed that to us. So thank you so much for visiting with us today. Now, don't go away a minute. I'm going to do a couple of uh, announcements next Monday. We have Fort Hood National Mounted Warrior Museum. We're going to have a early look. So we're going to see what's going on in the new museum. That'll be Monday at noon here on CTC's Facebook. We also have um, Communication Meets Community. That is in the library, and it's a way to practice public speaking. Uh, you've only got two minutes to convince people of something.
It could be read a favorite book, watch a movie, music, what you believe in, and um, you'll be judged by your peers. And the most convincing person gets a prize and a CTC t-shirt. Uh, we've got one Wednesday, November 10th, Tuesday, November 16th, and Wednesday, December 1st. Uh, we have the Poetry Slam on November 17th, and that will be on CTC's website, Facebook. And then we have our Night Sky Tours with uh, uh, the Maybone Science Theater astronomer, Warren Hart. We've also put in the comments uh, to start checking out our library events. We're going to be moving our library events to the library Facebook in 2022. And we're doing that with Night Sky Tours right now. Check out our events. We are already putting our 2022 events and we're going to have an awesome series on environment. So just yeah. get in the habit of start checking out what we've got going on. Okay, well, thank you again, Professor Drake, for visiting with us today. We are so excited that you took some time out of your busy schedule to visit with us. And well, we thank you. you consider it again. Well, right? Thank you for letting me share. Oh, you're welcome. And Lee, uh, bye everybody. You enjoy this cooler weather. <laughs> we have much cooler weather all of a sudden. And um, Lee, if you will take us out. Thanks again.